Hi, my name is Phoebe, and today I'm going to walk you through all fabric types that can only be shown in the render window. So let's jump on in and have some fun while we learn. So here we have our 3D window. I already have my in, uh, interactive render window open and ready. And I have my um, 3D window over here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over our fur render only option. Now, before we get into this, there's just a few things I'd like to remind us all. One, if you saw the video before this, we went over all uh, fabric types about the 3D window. Also, if you saw the video uh, before this, part one of fabric types, you know that fabric types do not influence the drape of your fabric at all. That is the same for render types as well. And also, as we know, with these render only types, with, with the um, 3D window, a lot of the changes that were happening were with the reflection. The big difference with the render fabric types is yes, the reflection changes a bit, but also we add in another element sometimes. So with fur render only, the element that's added in is the fur parameters and fur shape. So fur parameters is going to change like the color and look of your fur. While fur shape will change the actual shape of each fur strand. So you can make it longer, thicker, the bend, the taper, all of that stuff. That will change like the actual shape of your fur. In the next video, Fabric Types Part 3, we're going to do a deep dive into all about how to adjust and change around your fur. But in this part, we're just going to focus on how the reflection has been added in for fur in 6.2 and what that will then look like. So here with my reflection, you now have the ability to adjust it on fur. So again, I can make my roughness all the way to zero and my reflection intensity all the way up to 100. And you'll see this adjustment here in your 3D window. Once I hit interactive in my render window, you'll see that change as well. So now you can start to see how reflection has added in a different look to the fur and everything. So here we have our fur types and we have it for uh, 100 and zero all the way to zero and 100. And you can see how with this reflection, it will adjust it. So now let's move on to gem. So I'm going to move over here to our gem. Now, one quick thing is one of my best practices whenever I'm doing fabric types and changing things around is I like to keep my render window constantly at stop. And once I adjust all of the fabric type to what I like, then I hit interactive. Also, another thing to remember is you don't just have to apply fabric types to fabric. Fabric types can be applied to avatars, hardware, OBJs, all of those types of things. Um, it is not exclusively for fabric at all. So now let's click here and I'm gonna hit interactive in my type, in my render window. And you can see here in material, type selected, gem. So let's talk a little bit about gem and the differences that you see here. So if I scroll down to my gem type, you'll see that the reflection has changed, yes. But we've also added in this other element for our property and it's refraction. So you might be asking yourself, what's this refra refraction add in? What are all these refraction intensity, absorption and abby? Let me tell you. So refraction intensity will decide how cloudy or clear your gem is. You kind of want to remember what those three C's for um, diamonds and gems are, and they kind of work here as well. 
I believe it's like clarity cut and clear. I don't know. I think, I think that's it. I'm not sure. I don't have diamonds. I don't go shopping for them either. So like, who knows? Um, but for refraction, this is going to decide how cloudy or clear your gem is. Absorption is deciding how much that light that's coming in, the gem is going to absorb. So the higher you go for absorption, the more light will absorb, which means the darker the gem will then be. And Abby is going to be the hardest one to kind of understand, but I think I made it simple. Abby is going to measure how much of the, ref how much like the gem inside is reflecting out. So if you think about it, right, you know how diamonds kind of shine even on cloudy days, that is the Abby. So um, the lower the number, the more light that will disperse. So the more like rainbows you're gonna see inside. Well, the higher the number, um, the more, the clearer it will be. So the less rainbows. Here's a quick science lesson for anybody who wants to know. You think about it with a diamond, right? Diamond, light coming into that diamond. What happens is based off of how the diamond is cut and the abbey and everything, that light is going to hit around inside of that diamond for a certain amount of time and then reflect out. The light hitting inside of that diamond, that is what the abbey is. It's like how bright that will be. That will also determine like how many rainbows you see and everything. Also, what we'll be determining is if the light then gets um, separated out, which was how you see the rainbows, or if it stays as one for white light, and then you don't see the rainbows. That is as much science as we're going to get into today. If you're interested in it more, I would suggest researching into it. Um, but that is how I remember it for playing around. So now let's jump on in and play around with it. Okay, so here we have our refraction. Let's play around with refraction intensity. Here we have it all the way at 100. Let's see what it'll look like down to 11. This is pretty cloudy. Let's go back up. Now absorption is at 0 0.02. Let's see what it would be like at five. It's starting to absorb it in. Let's bump it up to like 10. Again, it's starting to absorb it a little bit more in and everything. Let's go back to 0 0.2. Less absorption and you see the light kind of bouncing off more. Finally, we have our Abby. This is at 80. Let's see what it will be like at one. Now you start to see those rainbows because the light's separating and it's bouncing around a little bit more. At 20, you still kind of see the edge of the rainbow, right? Because it's still separating, but you see like this is where it's bouncing around. It's going around in a little like square and all the way at 80 again. All that. So that is gem. Gems are great to use for when you have like rhinestones or stuff to place onto shirts or um, any garment really, or even any accessory that you want to place onto it. It can also be used if you were making jewelry or like home goods or something like that and you wanted to like have gems or something around. Okay, now let's move on to the glass. I'm gonna hit attractive. Let's select this. So here we have our glass render type. So here we've got glass. Now, if we look at the added element, again, it's refraction. No, this is very similar to what gem was, except we don't have the atom. We just have refraction intensity and absorption. 
So again, if I increase this, you'll see that it's going to be a little bit clearer. If my absorption goes up to five though, you're gonna see that this becomes a lot darker. Another thing that I want to add here is I've added in a color to my glass. Based off of how I set up this refraction um, intensity and absorption, that's going to directly affect how my color looks. Also, the angle in which I view my glass will also be affected. So if I lower my absorption down to one, you start to see the color more, but in darker areas, like areas where the glass is overlapping closer together, you won't see as, as much. Also, if I change my angle, you'll see how it's affected a little bit more too. Glass is really great for when you're doing environments and you have windows or when you're maybe making some home goods as well. Glass is gonna be really helpful for you. So now I'm gonna jump back into my fabric. I created custom views for this fabric. It's going to allow you to quickly jump back and forth to different viewpoints very quickly and easily. To get to custom views, all you have to do is right click and you can see them custom view. Okay. I'm also gonna just switch out the fabric to a nylon mat. Okay, so now we have our nylon mat and I'm gonna hit drag. So the next fabric type that we're gonna go over is glitter. So glitter is really great for when you have like glittery fabrics or also with um, graphics and you want to have glitter to that. Here I'm going to scroll down and you'll see that there is now these, this option called glitter parameters. So you can play around with the color, number, and saturation. So the color here, what you can do is you can actually decide what you want these little dots to be. You can have them so like they're a similar color or a completely different color if you want. I just always try to make sure that they're lighter than the base color. You also can decide how many, how like many glitter points you want within your fabric. I tend to stay between a hundred and 300, I find if I go over 300, like 500, they be, it becomes too dense and you don't get to really see the difference as easily. So I try to keep it around like three, 100 to 300. Finally, the other option you have is your saturation value. This is uh, saturation variation. This is going to allow you to vary the saturation per glitter. So it's just easier to show you. If I have um, one, you can see that um, each glitter spec is going to have different saturation and everything, and you'll see like the colors will change a bit. Pretty great, very glittery, yeah. Okay, now let's go into our iridescent option. Let's scroll down and hit interactive. So with our iridescent option, again, we've got our reflection options, which has changed a bit. I'm gonna make that lower. And we also have refraction, same things as before. You can play around here that there's more or less, and then also your absorption. I tend to just keep this what it is. Uh, it works the best. The next option you have here is the iridescent. So the first thing is color. You have five colors. You can actually go in and change these color chips to whatever color you want. 
So sometimes I pick like one U and then I'll do different um, levels of that, different saturations of that. Um, right now though, I'm just gonna pick different colors. And everything. Maybe this white is going to be like. So you can see that when you play around, you get a completely new iridescent look to it. The next option you have is roughness. Now, roughness is very similar to what roughness is when it comes to reflection. The lower the number, the higher the number, the more cover, uh, the more surface area it will cover, the light wall. While the higher the number, the smaller surface area it will cover. So right now we're at a smaller number and you can see like each little part is like really bright, each little section. While as if I went to higher, it would be more evenly spread out for the entire coverage. I like to keep it lower because I think that works better. The next option is hue shift. This will actually shift your hue over. So I can go over here and now I have like green hues instead. I can go down here. Now I've got like some blue, purple, greenish and everything. I can go more in the middle. We're gonna get to warmer colors and everything and all of that. Or I could just do zero and it will stay with what I originally have. And finally, we have the weight option. Now, this option is where the higher you go, the more weight the iridescent will have versus the ground color. So the iridescent will carry more weight than what your ground color will be. It just makes sense when you see it. So if I hire the weight here, you're gonna start to see that the iridescent colors become more prominent and heavier versus the ground color. But if I go farther down, you start to see more of the ground color and the iridescent is just like a light little highlight kind of. Pretty cool, right? And that is iridescent. The final options we have, go back to our gem. And here we also have light. So what light does is it just makes that object a light almost. It's great for when you have an environment and you want like a light bulb somewhere or anything and you just change that to a light. And also we have skin. So skin is really important for avatars and actually looks best on this. Skin is really important for when you have an avatar in your 3D workspace and you want it to look a little bit more realistic, you would apply a skin render to it and it will start to look a lot more realistic and everything versus just the fabric map and all of that. And these are all of our different rendering types. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please post them down below in the comment section. One 3D, uh, 3D designer will get back to you on it. Uh, I hope you learned a lot and please don't forget to like and subscribe. There's so much great content on this channel that will just help teach you and you'll just learn so much about Chloe and be such a pro before you know it. Thanks again.